What's up guys? Today I'm going to show you how I built the F-86 Sabre. This is one of my favorite planes of all time. With its shark-like nose and 35 degree swept wings, it's one of the most beautiful planes ever to fly. This plane first saw combat in the 1950s. In this era, pilots needed all the help they could get to distinguish the F-86 from its Russian counterpart, the MiG-15. This led to some of the most eye-catching paint jobs ever to see combat. Both planes were based on captured German designs for a plane known as the TA-183. The Russians built the MiG-15, the Americans built the F-86. The veteran World War II pilots that flew these planes over Korea in the 50s were the first to engage in true jet versus jet combat. They literally wrote the book on modern dogfighting. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build your own iconic piece of history, the F-86 Sabre. I want to keep this low complexity, so I can actually use it in multiplayer. I need to keep the hinge glitches and piston glitches to a minimum. I'll be asking a lot out of the few that I know that I need to make the basic shape work. The wings on the actual plane are angled at 35 degrees. I landed on 27 to get the wingtip parallel to the fuselage. For me, that wingtip angle is more important to the overall look of the plane than the exact 35 degree swept wing. This model tops out around 400 miles per hour. Not that fast by Trailmaker standards, but the actual plane was subsonic, so it feels like it scales well in Trailmakers. It should outclass most World War II style planes in the speed department, but not handling. Against more modern age jets, the Sabre should be outclassed in handling and speed, depending on the Bandit. And a really good pilot should be able to even the odds within certain limits. These extra tail fins will improve the overall yaw performance of the plane. This is an upgrade from the one on the workshop along with the trim logic I added to this model. I'm using this distance sensor as an always on switch. It'll keep my wings at the correct angle and I'll use it to trigger any detachable blocks I use later for drag reduction. I like to paint the block dark and give it a green always on glow on the secondary color so I can find it later. I'm using a piston to center the tail and this cluster of hinges to sweep back the rudder and the elevators. The hinges I'll link to the always on switch. Here's all the flight control logic I use in this plane. The green is for positive signals, the red is for negative. The first system dampens adverse roll caused by yaw by using the flap wings to adjust lift on either side of the plane when the rudder is activated. The second is a setup to activate the elevators at 60% to trim out the aggressive climb caused by the low center of thrust. Toggle it on for cruising and off for better turning. Now for paint. I'm going with the polished aluminum look and a black and yellow rudder. I'm going for the livery that to me is the most iconic. Although the Canadian school model that is pretty eye-catching, it's a freaking fly beer can. <laughs> Cheers, Canada. I like your style. In decaling, I get a lot of mileage out of the number one.
On the tail fins, I'm using decals and paint to divide the aileron into two sections to kind of trick the eye into not noticing how wide these are compared to the real plane. Some Air Forcey lettering and a flaming skull should about match that combat pilot level of bravado. A little more personal branding and a few friendly warnings. And this is looking like a finished plane, kids. I'm giving the Saber some significant drag reduction to get it up to a good speed. This model will top out at about 420 miles per hour or 675 kilometers per hour. These detachable blocks are all triggered immediately when the plane is spawned by the always on switch. Here are the settings for all the flaps and ailerons. Again, this plane is meant to fly more like an IRL version than the hyper maneuverable trailmaker style. If you take these settings into multiplayer, be ready for a challenge. And this is the second library I did, inspired by the Golden Hawks. And these are the exact settings for the roll dampening and the trim ore gates. And yes, the weld groups can be grumpy. Just accept that you won't always get to choose what direction you're pointing when you spawn the plane in. Wempler got there, eventually. Oh. Thanks for hanging out, guys. If you're still here, you might as well click the thing. I'll see you in the next one, Trailmaker. Peace.